Welcome to Greybeard's Jewels. Step into the unknown. Episode 6. 10 Scary Haunted Places. Number 10. The Gene Harlow House. Los Angeles, California has its fair share of haunted houses, and the Gene Harlow House in Beverly Hills is one of them. This house has gruesome history. Let's start with her husband, Paul Byrne, who shot himself in the head while looking in the mirror. The butler who found him, he didn't call police, instead he called MGM, which fueled many rumors about it being a suicide. Many posit that Byrne's ex-girlfriend did it, but that suspicion went away when a couple days later she jumped to her death from a boat. Jean moved out of that house after her husband's death but died only a couple years later at 26. Creepier, you say? Okay. 1963, celebrity hairstylist Jay Sebring bought the home and lived there with his girlfriend Sharon Tate, who left him for Roman Polanski. But they stayed friends up until the Manson cult ended their lives. Tate was also 26. So getting back to when Tate lived in the house with Sebring, she told several friends about weird things that went on in the house and even talked about it in interviews. She went on to say that when she was sleeping in the master bedroom by herself, she saw a weird little man that her friends believed to be Paul Byrne's ghost. She said she was so freaked out that she ran into the hallway, only to see a shadowy figure hanging with its throat cut. Jinkies. And on top of that, there's also stories of two more people dying in the swimming pool through the years. Number 9. S.K. Pierce House Okay, Massachusetts has plenty of haunted mansions, but the S.K. Pierce Victorian is the scariest. Sylvester Pierce had the home built for himself, his son, and wife Susan after making his fortune in the furniture business. He hosted many high-profile people in his 7,000-square-foot home through the years, even a president. Yes, President Calvin Coolidge was there along with Betty Davis and Norman Rockwell. A week after moving in, though, Susan, his wife, died from a mysterious bacterial disease. One year later, he remarried a woman named Ellen, who was 30 years younger than him, and they had two more children. Flash forward many years to the death of Sylvester and Ellen, when his two sons take up a feisty feud over the property and the furniture company. As bad luck would have it, the Great Depression came and ended their furniture company, and they were forced to sell it. Edward, the youngest son, was given control of the house, and he turned it into a boarding home. The home then became a hot spot for murders and sudden tragic deaths of several people living there. That was according to local lore. And you know how we like local lore. With all these violent endings, guests report everything from apparitions to objects moving on their own, disembodied voices, cold spots, and more. Number 8. 455A Sackett Street. Okay, so usually apartments don't make the list for houses. But an apartment can be a house too, right? Maybe we'll do some apartment hauntings on a future episode. Anyway, a woman who lived at 455A Sackett Street recounted her first-hand experiences including unexplained fires, really bad energy drawings, family tragedies, and much personal suffering. And the kicker? The body of a child found inside a wall, only after many sightings of a similar looking shadow of a child in the mirror. There are plenty of other tenants who live there that corroborate her story of the events that have happened there. Number 7. Lee Family Mansion in Taiwan The Mingxian Ghost House was built in 1929 and it has a mysterious, sad history. The mansion has been empty ever since the 1950s, when the family fled the house never to return. Now there is plenty of lore with the family and why they abandoned their tranquil home. So according to the lore, the maid was having an affair with her boss, We Rong Yu. So when the seeker came out, she was so scared that she ran and jumped down the well and died. But could there be a different version? Like where a family member pushed her instead and she came back to haunt the family until they left never to return? 
couple years after, the mansion was bought and occupied by the KMT, members of the Kuomintang of China, many of whom committed suicide, which has just increased the house's reputation as being haunted. Number 6. Los Feliz Murder Mansion During the mid-20th century, this mansion in Los Angeles was the happy home of Dr. Harold Per Elson and his family. That was until December 6, 1959, when the doctor murdered his wife with a ball-peen hammer in her sleep. He tried to murder his three children also, but the eldest daughter let out a scream after he hit her one time in the head, which woke up the younger children who went to the hallway to find out what was going on. Luckily, they all were able to escape the house and all survived. The doctor drank acid and committed suicide after his murderous attacks. Before all this happened, the doctor was successful and invented a new type of syringe. But after investing almost all of his money into research and production, he ended up getting cheated out of the rights, which led investigators to blame financial problems. They also found a passage of Dante's Divine Comedy left open on his bedside table. Two years later, it was sold to the Enriquez family, who used it just to store some of their extra stuff they had. Their son took over and used it until 2016, when he sold it to a couple who intended to fix it up. But within a couple years, it was right back on the market. Photographers also say they get a feeling of needing to run away when they get close to the mansion. Number 5. Villa di Becci in Italy I really liked researching this one, and I don't know, the more we dove into it, the more... You'll see, it, it's like there's something else there like a presence beyond the presence is already there something like that you'll see at the end anyway okay so with this villa being by lake como in italy there's usually a fog blanket around this place which makes it very foreboding also the nickname of the house being house of witches just adds to it it was built around 1854 to 1857 as a summer house for Count Felix de Vici, but tragedy would strike a couple years after moving in. First, the architect died the first year after it was constructed. Then in 1862, the Count came home, found his wife murdered and his daughter missing. After looking for a whole year for his daughter and not finding her, he committed suicide. After that, his brother moved into the home of his family and lived there until World War II. It has remained empty since the 1960s, and in 2002, an avalanche wiped out everything around except for the villa. That's just weird. Number 4. Hotel Monte Vista in Flagstaff, Arizona This hotel in Arizona has plenty of paranormal guests for you to encounter. In 1927, the hotel was built and named the Community Hotel for the townspeople who raised the money for it to be built. Now the history. There were opium dens underground, speakeasies, and gambling. With all this, you would expect some bad things to happen, right? That brings us to today and the paranormal activities that are happening. Like guests who stay in room 220 experiencing their TV channels changing on its own, and cold hands touching them in their sleep. Or, there's also reports of a ghostly bellboy who knocks on doors and announces room service. And when they get up to the door and open it, there's nobody there. But, the most disturbing account is that of an infant heard crying in the basement. Hotel staff have come running up the stairs trying to make the cries go away. Even though the sounds are real to the people that hear them, there has been no explanation for the phenomenon. Number 3. Hotel Cecil in Los Angeles, California Some people say the Hotel Cecil is more cursed than haunted. From what we have read, and there's a lot, we think it's both. Let's throw some history at ya. The first suicide documented at the hotel happened in 1931, followed by a long list of similar deaths from 1932 all the way up through 1940. There was also a man pinned to the building by a truck in the 30s. In 1944, a woman murdered her newborn in the building, and the suicides were still happening all the way up until the 60s. 
1962, a woman jumped from the ninth floor window and landed on a person walking below, killing them both. Here's a little fact for you. Two of the women who died by suicide from jumping out their window did so with their husband sleeping in the bed right there in their room. Am I right, true crimers? You knew that already. In 1964, a tenant named Goldie Osgood was brutally murdered and the case still hasn't been solved. In the 80s, the serial killer Richard Ramirez, aka the Night Stalker, stayed at the hotel. Then a decade later, in the 90s, the Australian serial killer Jack Utterwidge lived there for a while. Okay, so in a span of a decade, not one, but two serial killers have either stayed at or lived at the Hotel Cecil. That's just on its own level of weird. And speaking of weird things happening, the disappearance of traveler Elsa Lamb rates right up there. So a few weeks after Elsa went missing, the guests started complaining about a nasty taste coming from their water. When they checked the water tank, they found Elsa's body floating in the water. After discovery of her body, they checked the hotel's cameras and found a lot of weird and unexplained things on the video. It's hard to make out what she's doing, but it looks like she's either playing hide and seek with someone outside a camera angle, or she's trying to hide from someone or something outside a camera view. But the elevator doors won't close, which is weird and authorities ruled her death an accidental drowning. But how would she have gotten a key to unlock the door to the roof where the water tank was? Hmm. Leave us a comment below and let us know your theories. Number 1. The Lump Mansion in St. Louis, Missouri The Lump Mansion is known to be one of the hauntedest places in America. William Lump built his 33-room house in the 1860s. He was a successful brewery owner who killed himself in 1904 after his youngest son died. His wife died a couple years later from cancer. And in 1922, William Lemp Jr. shot himself in the same room as his father. And if that wasn't enough, William's third son Charles killed his dog in the basement and then went back up to his room and killed himself in the same room as his brother and father did. That's just crazy. Witnesses have experienced slamming doors and burning sensations. Three people in the family, all dying in the same room at different times. How messed up is that? Thanks for listening to Greybeard's Jewels. Step into the unknown. If you like today's podcast, follow us on Spotify or wherever you like to listen. And don't forget to check out the links in the description. And as always, thank you for your support.